and Antrim. In the league, they were going in opposite directions, but Antrim did win here two years ago. Yeah, but Antrim have regressed since then, and Donegal, certainly under Jimmy McGuinness, have improved, albeit with the same group of players. There's no major change in personnel from what he would have inherited. I saw Donegal live twice. I was at two of their games, and I was at one of the Antrim games. And certainly Donegal have adopted a much more defensive type of game than any mm. other team that I've ever seen. And at the final in Crow Park, it was the first time when they played Leash that I saw Donegal yes. had all their players in their own defensive half of the field on one occasion. I had never ever seen that in a county game before where everybody retreated back. But normally they leave Colin McFadden and Michael Murphy up and that's a good outlet for them but they do play a very defensive style. Donegal gave Antrim a fairly good beating in the league now yeah. Antrim did have problems kind of injuries and so forth at the time will they be yeah. will they be better today I presume they will. Well no, I think I think the Antrim project under Liam Bradley is fizzling out you know Liam when he comes into a team you know he's, it's a bit like the Kevin Keegan effect you know he, he there are results very quickly because he's yeah. charismatic and he's good with the players and all of that he's, he's not really a long-term project man and you know, during the league this year, there were unmistakable signs that the team was losing its spirit. You mm. know, there wasn't that chemistry that there had been. Division two is a lot tougher, and they had a very salutary lesson throughout Division two. I mean, you beat Neath, you know, Biggs. I mean, who wouldn't <laughs> at the moment? But aside from that, I mean, they played Derry in the league in 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 in, in Casement Park, and they looked like beaten dogs that day. I mean, Derry had a well easy victory and yeah, a very yeah, very poor yeah. game, and they looked completely different from the Antrim team that were getting ready to play Championship last year. Sure. On the other hand, you've got Donegal, even though they're playing ultra defensive football, they've got terrific inside forwards, and the question is who can stop the Boy Mountain sure. from Glen Swilly? This is the big question. Let's head over to Bally Buffet. In the regular netminder here since 2004. And today he's fronted by a full back line that includes Neil McGee and Paddy McGrath, both of whom missed the recent Division II league final. At half-back, Kevin Cassidy starts his 34th championship match, flanked by Frank McGlynn and Anthony Thompson. Newcomer Martin McElhenney starts in midfield, as he did against Leash, alongside the experienced Rory Cavada. In the half-forwards, Ryan Bradley will wear the number 12 shirt, making a a return to championship action after an absence of two years and then up front most of the attention will center on Michael Murphy and Colin McFadden who between them have scored six goals and 132 points in championship Davids who gets the nod over Chris Kerr of St. Gauls in the absence of Andy McCann the Saffrons look to Richie Johnston to man, to, uh, man the edge of the square alongside the team captain Kevin O'Boyle the half back line has a couple of familiar names Tony Scullion and Justin Crozier have played alongside one another for the past five summers. Michael McCann is named in midfield as partner for Eldon Gallagher, but he could be switched into attack. There's a first start for Mark Sweeney at wing forward, while the number 10, Connor Murray, has limited championship experience. And up front, the main scoring threat comes from Paddy Cunningham, an outstanding free taker, while Brendan Heron and Kevin Niblock may be given deeper roles to play. Martin. People say about Donegal, they're lovely people and it's a lovely place to go and it's a lovely place to go on holiday but uh, in football in terms we're maybe nice people and maybe nice people on the field as well and you get to play Armagh and these teams and uh, sometimes we're, we're, we're pushed about the place because we are too nice. When I was playing and even you know 19, 20, 21 I was managing a lot of underage teams and it was always coaching in my head all the time and I was always drawn towards it so uh, it's fantastic for me now to be in this position that I am in and managing the team and we're, you know, we're moving forward hopefully as a county. For me, 1992 was won between the Ulster semi-final and the Ulster final because we really, really, really trained. I've never trained harder in my life and I know the players in the squad have never trained harder in their life either. And so much had gone into it that just they weren't going to let it go. And I think back in the now, that would be the reason, in my mind anyway, why it, why it came to Donegal in 1992. When you're playing and you've got a, a coach's mind, you're thinking to yourself all the time, you know, that's good, or maybe I wouldn't have done that there, or you would take this or you would take that, and you're forming your own idea of how you think the game should be played and how you would do things all the time, and exposure to other managers and, and coaches as well, good and bad, you know, the good information and the bad information is equally as valuable.
it would be very wrong for me to say the under 21s were excellent last year and they got to the All Ireland final. So I have an affinity with them and we want to play so many of them in the senior team because ultimately when you get the senior job, every single player in the county is a Donegal player and they must get equal respect whether they're 19 years of age or they're 26 or like Michael Haggerty, they're 30 or 31. We didn't put an emphasis on one in the league. Um, in the first early stages of the league, we were just focusing on trying to develop a style of play or styles of play at that stage. It's brilliant to have, I suppose, the trophy in the cabinet now, but at the end of the day, the 15th of May was always the date that was in our mind at the start of the year. I want the boys playing for Donegal and playing for their jersey and playing with passion and playing uh, intelligent football and flamboyant football if we can but we want them to put their best foot forward and be positive and take the challenge to the opposition whether it's Antrim or whether it's Dublin or whether it's Tyrone or whether it's Armagh it doesn't matter every day is a challenge and we must go out and try and meet that challenge and that's the only way we're going to progress and uh, we've done that through the league and now the real test starts in the championship and for me I'm looking forward to that because they have been questioned and their integrity has been questioned in the past and you know uh, their willingness to, to play for the county has been questioned in the past and I just I want to see the answer now are we are we moving on are we moving in the right direction and do we want to do it or is it we're going to be the same old Donegal so it's it's a very important day for us today and it's a very important day for the county if we want to move into the to the, to the latter stages of the championship. Yeah, Tony Gold manager Jim McGuinness there. He has one star forward in Michael Murphy. There's no question about that, Colin O'Rourke. Would you want to just also highlight the man who will be uh, on his side there in the, the uh, corner forward position, Colin McFadden? Yeah, well, I think it's very valuable in any forward line to have a left-footed player. And uh, Daniel Goulding shows that with Cork. And it's particularly important, say, for Freeze on the right-hand side of the field. So, as well as that, McFadden is a big fella. He, the ball can be kicked in high to himself and Murphy, and both of them are well capable of winning it and scoring. Now, McFadden has been around a long time, mm -hmm. and at times in the past we often said, you know, he flattered to deceive. But definitely throughout this league campaign and under the manager, under the new manager, Jimmy McGuinness, he seems to have found a new lease of life and is certainly playing a lot better than any time I have seen him in the past and seems to be more involved in the game. Guys like him are certainly going to test the Antrim defence. New goalkeeper and the full-back, Ricky Johnson, is also going to get a big test today. Well, Ricky Johnson is a very unusual sort of a find for Antrim because he didn't even play full-back for his club, Cregan. But he was brought in sort of midway through the league and he's been terrific. He doesn't look particularly like a footballer, you know, he's mm. big and sort of cumbersome looking, but he's terrifically quick. And I mean, he really did a terrific job on uh, Michael Murphy during the league and also on Paddy Bradley. And it's very, very important that Murphy's kept quiet because he's so tricky and he can take the game away from you in a couple of, I mean, a couple of minutes. He can stick two balls in the net and the game's over. In again. one word, Joe, Donegal to win? I think Donegal handsomely. Colm? Yeah, I would agree with that. It would seem as if Donegal should win fairly easy. All right, lads, thanks for that. All set to go on Bally Buffet then. So let's hand over to our commentary team. And they, once again, are Jerk Hanning. Trying to make an angle for himself. Little breeze into his face now at this stage, blowing across the field from the stand side. Should suit a left-footed kicker. It does. And Donegal take the lead in the opening minutes. Cut away the, the ultra-defensive blanket that they have had over the last couple of games. It might suit them better. So in the windy conditions, it's Kevin Niblock who steps up to take this free, dropping it in and dropping it over the bar. So tying up the match, the opening two scores coming in the Ulster Championship from Freeze. The first from Colomac Fadden, this latest one from Kevin Niblock, hitting onto the crossbar and just having the distance of getting his first point in the 2011 championship from 20 meters out he's put it wide well there's martin McElhenney, the player who was being held back free quickly taken on as far as ryan bradley ryan bradley you missed a couple of championship seasons but back in favor once again dermot malloy now bradley being encouraged to go and have a kick and Try and get the score from here, and he does, and he puts it over the bar. It's taken us nearly 22 minutes for a point to come here from play. 
and Donegal take the lead once again by two points to one thanks to Ryan Bradley's long distance shooting just his fourth ever point in the championship and it's two points to one in favour of the home team at on the lose Tony Scullion vital member of their team this is kicked in by Paddy Cunningham he may have missed the last one he's got this one and he ties up the match once again so it's two points a piece to go slipped to his left carried on by Ryan Bradley in as far as Adrian Hanlon usually one of those players who will shoot on sight and he has a go this time and it's well worth doing and it's a nice point and it's over the bar his first of the day his fourth ever in the championship and Johnny Gaul shoot back into the lead again by three points to two good combination play and from the angle it was Hanlon from Dunglo who fired it over the bar 3-2 that's great confidence from Hanlon to concede the free in absolutely Michael Murphy then to hit this one over from about 22 meters out big cheer because it's his first point in this year's a wall of defenders but it's broken open and it's Connor Murray who had the chance of slipping it in and putting it over the bar and instead he's put it wide great chance into McFadden there's a space here in a gap Carol Lacey surrounded immediately Justin Crozier trying to get it from him a good block by Crozier on Dermot Malloy but still the shot is taken and it's an effective one and it's put over the bar and it's Ryan Bradley again another one for the 25 year old from Bunkrana that's great in contrast to a lot of the tippy tappy football that they're playing so five points to two Connor Murray now trying to break free look at the three men from Donegal after him dished off and it's Cunningham who strikes and Cunningham has put it over the bar that's Antrim's first point to come from play well it's taken them what nearly 33 minutes to get this it was a great run everybody after him trying to foul him the referee allowed an advantage there for Cunningham to kick it and to put it over Paul Durkin was arguing with the umpire that That's fisted this time by Erdogan Gallagher. I haven't seen a great deal of him in this match. Kevin Cassidy has been very much involved. Nicely across here as far as Martin McElhenney, the DCU student. Back as far as Dermot Malloy. That's a good kick. And Donegal are finding a little bit of confidence now. And they are much the better team. And they are leading this match by six points to three. Yeah, what was lovely in that move was the change of direction, the switch of the ball over to the far side of the field, and the layoff to... Opener we were hoping for, so far. No, we weren't expecting it, I suppose, because mm. both sides are so ultra-defensive, but it's a throwback, really, of the style of Ulster football, or a throwback in the type of game we experienced in the sort of 70s and 80s, where a lot of sort of fouling, a lot of messing around with the ball, both sides over and back across the field, you know, a bit like... A dog chasing a, a crowd of dogs chasing a rabbit, you know, and everybody running around each other, and there's no individual tussles and very poor skill levels. I suppose it also has to be said, Joe, in fairness, it doesn't maybe forgive the style of football, but the conditions are clearly not good either in Valley Buffet, and that doesn't help. The way the teams are set up is, you know, almost inevitably going to kill the game, and then if you add a bit of rain and a bit of wind to that, you know, and also Donegal's. You know, the disease of Donegal football is solar on and short hand passing. And so you, you put those combinations together of a blanket defence, their, their natural instinct to solo and hand pass. And I mean, it's a lethal cocktail that can lead only to one thing, which is boredom. It can, but you were saying to me during that first half that if, if Donegal realised how much better they were than Antrim, that they could really open up. Yeah, and this is, you know, where the, the point about, you know, personal freedom within the straight jacket of... You know, you can, you can have tactics, but there must be personal freedoms within that. And it may well be, you know, and I've heard Jim McGuinness talking about that he's discussed personal freedoms with his players, but the way they're set up means that it's very difficult for players to express themselves. And what's happening now is that they've got two extremely dangerous insights. Well, they've got three. They've got Malloy, McFadden and Murphy, who are redundant. Mm. I mean, Murphy has mm. been redundant. Mm. It wouldn't matter if Colin Cooper was in there with Kieran Donaghy. I mean, they're entirely redundant. 
mean, Kerry can play defensively and they can move a sweeper in and all of that, but they move the ball out at pace and their heads are up and they kick the ball and they kick past well and, you know, they kick diagonal balls and they use... I mean, they've got two of the best ball-winning full forwards in the game on the edge of the square. And they're entirely redundant. The net effect of that now is that Michael Murphy has come away out into his own defence at times. McFadden's out around the midfield area. And, I mean, really what you've got is just hand-passing and hand-passing and hand-passing without anyone looking up and then... Someone just taking a shot from 50 metres, hoping that it'll go over the bar. And, you know, that's how they've got their two or three scores from play. But, in fact, there's no magic with it. There's no fun with it. And it's a very, very poor style of play. I mean, they've got to find the balance between defence and attack, and they haven't done that. Speaking of which, Colin, that's exactly how they started to get their scores from play. And it took them 21 minutes to get the first of those. Yeah, it was a fairly boring opening 20 minutes. They certainly did improve, but in the end... It appeared as if the Donegal players who shot for points did it because there wasn't nearly anybody available just to take a short hand pass. And here we have Dermot Malloy uh, having a shot from range with a bit of wind behind him and kicks a great point. And again, you <laughs> he gave one to the Derry team recently, and I'm not, I'm not joking you, it's changed their lives. <laughs> You won't find it in any manual now. You won't find it in any of John Morrison's manuals on, on motivational talk. Thankfully, perhaps, <laughs> just in case people think we're being too hard on Donegal here, Joe, you've been looking at their pattern of play and just exactly how they set the team up. And I think what you've got coming up here illustrates this. Well, the priority is defence. And when the priority is made defence, you know, then the players will play in that way and they'll play with fear. There's ten players. Now, we could have taken 50 snapshots from the yeah. first half that we've shown exactly that. There are 10 defenders, there are 10 players back, you know, half of them forwards, obviously. Mostly Colin McFadden's in the half, in the Donegal half on its own. Now, the net effect of that is when they do get the ball and come out, it's not that they move the ball quickly and long to the danger men. They don't really have a creative player at centre half forward. What a certain frame of mind, the only player in their own attacking half of the field is Colin McFadden. Even if he gets the ball, what are his options? He lays it off to someone else coming through. Right. So it becomes, you know, it becomes a mess, really, in essence. And the, and the priority is defending. And if you can snipe a few scores well and good, that's OK at the moment. It's not going to be any good in terms of winning an Ulster Championship or advancing beyond that. OK, we're going to take another break here on the programme. And, and my view is there's sort of conflicting forces at play here. The Donegal management or the Donegal players will say, you know, our job is not to entertain. If we decide we're going to win a game and if it stays six points to three, then we're into the next round. We're happy with that. But the wider obligations to the game itself are, you know, the game has to be entertaining or people just won't go to see it. And nobody would be a bit interested in going to see that sort of rubbish that we have there in the first half. You know, and people say to me, well, you know, you're an old dinosaur. You only like the type of football there was in the 80s and 90s. We had true. football last year in the championship which had a lot of defence but we had brilliant attack as well which is missing here and you know if this is the evolution of the game then Darwin was probably right we're all still apes but this because this isn't either entertaining yes. or skillful or anything else there's nothing to recommend this game we coined the phrase here on really care how that happens the, this, the, the thing is though that there's a, there's a pattern with Jim's approach you saw it with the under-21s last year. I mean, they circled the wagons. They forgot to attack in the final. They would have beaten Dublin, except they forgot to attack. I mean, Michael Murphy stood redundant on the edge of the square mm. that day. And, you know, they still could have won it. Now, this, this sort of game can be quite effective, but so long as you marry it with an attacking plan and an attacking strategy. But the difficulty there is is that either their attacking strategy is being ignored by the players or there is no attacking strategy because what you're seeing is that the, the overwhelming priority is defensive, so that even Michael Murphy... And at times it could have shown even 10, 12, 13 players back, is you cannot give the ball up to anybody because there is actually there. nobody There's in no attack. And it seems strange to me when they have two attackers who are probably as good as any other forwards in the country, that at least they don't keep, keep those two up, keep a man, say, in the centre-half forward position, that you'd always have three up, like Kerry or Cork, like Cork are the best example. They'll always leave Daniel Gould and Kieran yeah, Sheen sure. or Paddy Kelly up there in, in the attack so always. that they can kick yeah, the ball up. And it seems to me that it's self-defeating for Donegal to play in the style that they are. 40 metres out from the Antrim target. Back to Dermot Malloy. Held on to by Martin McElhenney. Back to Colin McFadden having a go. And McFadden has put it over the bar. Point for Colin McFadden, his second of the match. First came at the beginning of the game, a free. This time, the product of some 
slow patient build up and McFadden taking on the responsibility at the time when we saw it first Martin I think it was going outside the post but the wind somehow must have managed to carry it in well I thought from this angle that we were at and we were perfectly positioned for it that the ball had actually gone outside the post but nobody none of the Antrim players seemed to object about it the umpires were very well placed and obviously they're the people in the correct position to adjudicate on it Not Michael Murphy setting off again McFadden has gone very deep slipping it outside here waiting for it is Ryan Bradley at a very good first half man from Bungrana the 25 year old let's fly gets the boot behind it and this time he's put the ball wide football has changed fundamentally Colin McFadden bouncing it here is McHugh having a go and the crowd like it giving their roars of encouragement and Mark McHugh gets his first point of the 2011 championship to go with a couple of points he got last year played in two matches then played here against down played against Armagh as well bounced it looked very composed struck it beautifully yeah, and six. Uh, his manager looks on in pensive mood this from about 30 meters from the target to try and extend the advantage and he's got it absolutely right So two points from two frees. Oh, they're passing the parcel, basically. And in the end, this is held up here by Kevin Cassidy. It's a bit of a struggle. Chipped ahead by Brady, in tight towards the end line. Held onto by Scully and the wing back. Here's a chance, really good chance, fell to Niblock and booted away in the end by Paddy McGrath. Last offence. Five points between the teams in the 48th minute. Murphy kicking from 35 metres and he has dragged it badly. On, And uh, so too the number 27, not programmed, but isn't that, uh, that is Patrick McBrearty. So he's going to come on, the 17-year-old on the right of your picture right now. He played in the minor match and he's now going to play in the senior match and make his championship debut. Before all of that, Michael Murphy steps up, kicks it calmly and dispatches it over the cross to Anto Healy. Colin Murray now playing it here towards Healy again. Still they look for a couple of late scores and might just get one here, they do. Nice point. And I think it may well have been uh, Mark Dugan who got it. So good score for him just on in the last couple of minutes well took it really well yeah what's very noticeable about that that's the first time i've seen the antrim defenders be fun if antrim got a goal now yeah and what if uh, danny mclaughlin comes on in the next couple of minutes for uh Danny goal here comes edon gallagher a little block on it there by michael murphy well, they're going to show plenty of endeavour, you can be certain of that, as Tomas McCann has a go. And he's got another white flag. It's not over just yet. Tomas McCann with his second. Ten points to six. And Ryan Bradley is going to be the one who will make way. And Danny McLaughlin, number 24, is going to come on. Taking on Carol Lacey, but uh, dragging him down at the same time. Yes, and just counting there as you're commentating, there are 14 Donegal players inside their own 45 meter line at the moment. The only outlet, if they do get the ball out, is Colin McFadden, who is up inside the 20 meter line on the far side. And as so you say, there's a gap between the 65 meter line and the 20 meters. That's right, and so it's no wonder the Donegal have to run through the hands like short hand pass the ball and all the way out they have so many men concentrating in defense at the moment they're happy to just see out the game at 10 points to six as it is at the moment but just from the point of spectacle it doesn't add to it well mark dugan antrim and uh, the injury necessitates oh that's a red card is it yes straight red and a straight red card given to mark dugan I didn't see the actual incident. Well, there were two players going for it with Carol Lacey. Let's have a look at it again here. Now, there's a hand being held. 
pulls him down. He pulls Lacey, uh, Lacey down with him. But, oh, oh, yes, definitely. That's an elbow straight in the face. Definite red card. Can't have any complaints about that. Referee got it. Holding off here is Kevin Rafferty. Neatly in as far as McHugh. And McHugh strikes into the corner of the net. He was involved twice in that move. It's his first ever championship goal. It comes in the 70th minute. And it well and truly seals Antrim's fate and sends Donegal on their way to the first round proper of this year's Ulster Championship. His dad has done it so many times in the past. McHugh got the pass back from Kevin Rafferty. Three Antrim players went and then left the space. But there was work to do for McHugh and he took it with calmness and with an assurance. And that's a lovely finish. Really good combination play. Really good finish by young Mark McHugh, the 20-year-old from Kilcar. It's 1-10. Just to be said, and it, you have to, I suppose, at the same time, acknowledge the effort made by both sets of players, but it was, a, you know, there's been loads of effort expended and all of that, but it's been a very poor game. The uh, final score of the match will be credited to Kevin Niblock. He's got a second point from a free, a seventh point in all for Antrim, but they are well and truly beaten as the fans make their way off it's going to be a six point defeat for Antrim six point victory for the home team here comfortably on their way to the first round of the Ulster Championship here in studio lads uh, Martin Carney said it there and I suppose we can't put any simpler than that that was a very disappointing effort yeah, well, basically, we could just confirm after the match what we were saying at halftime. You know, the, the standard of the play was very poor. What you have is a, a sort of standard robotic type of player now who runs around the field, gets the ball from a hand pass and gives a hand pass, and you have a couple of players who kick the ball. So one of the great elementary skills of Gaelic football, kicking, has almost disappeared. I don't know what the stats would tell us from that game, but... I'm quite sure it would show probably seven or eight times the amount of hand passes as kicks. It's not enjoyable from a spectator's point of view. Again, Jimmy McGuinness will go and say, you know, job done, players from Donegal would be happy. I can't understand the attitude of the Antrim players or the Antrim management who d adopted a defensive mode to the game even though when they were far behind and the game was out of sight. They still retreated into defence instead of pushing up. The test for Donegal will be when they are behind in a game, mm. what are they going to do? Are they going to be able to go forward uh, and attack, or are they still going to be programmed into this defensive mode and won't be able to change? Having seen what we just saw, it's it's easy enough, I suppose, to get sort of a bit depressed about the state of football, but hopefully no, no, what we've seen today isn't going to be what the standard of football is for the summer. No, and, you know, as, the, as, as, as there are bigger days and bigger games and the zip comes into the games, you know, I think that Antrim came to contain... I mean, Liam Bradley thought, did not think in his heart of hearts that they could beat Donegal and will probably be quite pleased that the scoreline was, was the way that it was. I mean, he came and he played an extra full-time defender. He kept that seventh defender throughout the second half when they were six points behind. So that's an illustration to you of the mindset. From Donegal's perspective, you know, the, Jim McGuinness will say, well, look, we're learning to defend. We're learning to do something that a Donegal mm -hmm. team has never done before and we're not going to be a pushover for anyone. But the difficulty comes whenever they go three or four points behind and then they've got to break out of that. And also the problems against a team like Cork who are going to have you in your back foot and attacking you. Teams like Tyrone who are going to be attacking you and not sort of you know, letting you off the hook the way Andrew are doing. Mm. And you know, it's just going to cause a problem. They need to find that balance between defence and attack because the shame of it, the point is that they've got three or four very good forwards. OK, we're headed for a short break. We're going to have more. It's Tony Gall against Cavan. Yeah. Will they uh, win that one? That will have the country on the edge of their seats. <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, I can't remember the last time I looked forward to something so much. <laughs> It'll be, it's unlikely to be a sellout game. I remember the Dublin players being, being, before the league final, we were being told about this revolutionary new defensive system and it's almost impossible mm. to break down. And it's all about marking space. Now, you tell me when space last scored in Crow Park. I mean, you see in those two clips, by the way, in those two clips, they both scored. Paddy Cunningham scored for Antrim. All right. And Colin McFadden scored for Donegal. OK, but a last point on that. Is it not... I suppose from our perspective, you know, we've lost the three 
uh, first round games in the last three years, you know, and it was just important to get a victory. And we're, we're glad now that we have the victory. We have a month, I suppose, to look at this. And we definitely can say that we'll be able to make it better because we have so much to work on. But uh, it's just important that we're, we're in the first round proper now and we can we can look forward to another month of preparation. Antrim came in here a couple of years ago and turned us over. We knew you going into the game today that was, wasn't going to be an easy game. And uh, so it proved to be. So we're just we're relieved. And as I say, we're going to go back to the training ground, as I say, now next Tuesday and work on things. And we're just delighted to be in the next round. It wasn't a pretty game to watch, I'm sure, for the viewers back home, so it wasn't, but uh, you know, somebody else said to me there that we, we, we were as bad as them, but you know, getting men behind the ball and being defensive, but what else could we do, you know? That's, uh, that's the way football's going now, and, and unless somebody makes some sort of a real change or does something about it, that's the way it's going to be. Well, is that the nub of it all, Pat? Liam Bradley, very honest there about players behind the ball. You were very frustrated watching that game today. It was. I mean, the GA were criticised for putting on such a low-profile game to start the championship. But, you know, in hindsight, it was a brilliant decision because if that was a high-profile game and that was the type of football that was played, well, then we'd be turning off in the droves and watch it. It was an awful game of football. And you had all the symptoms of modern-day football where the, the main plank for, uh, for success for both teams was based on being negative, being defensive and stopping the opposition from playing. And you had all the ills of the modern game of Gaelic football in evidence. Too much hand-passing, too much soloing, too much losing of the ball in possession, too much freeze, lazy tackling, uh, little or no long kick passes. And the standard of forward play in particular, agreed the conditions were bad, but the standard of forward play, 22 minutes before any one of the teams scored from play, 32 minutes before Antrim got their first score from play. 30 minutes, Donegal went 30 minutes in the second half without scoring from play. Antrim went 28 minutes in the second half without getting any score at all. Uh, it, you had to pay 25 euro to get into the stand in Ballybo. 27. 27. If you would pay, tw if I pay 27 euro, I'd be demanding my money back because I got damn poor value mm. from an atrocious game. Brian Bradley did particularly well, we thought, uh, throughout the game, put in, a, put in a good shift. And on the Antrim side, and there wasn't too many of them that got up to championship pace, Aidan Gallagher uh, put in a good 70, yeah. Right. And the man the match, first of the season, in, in mediocrity, the best of a very poor bunch, we decided in the end, was Ryan Bradley from I Junigal. give him a bit of credit. Uh, I'd still say the same thing. I mean, he didn't have a particularly outstanding game. But in the first half, when it needed a bit of leadership and a bit of responsibility, he kicked two points when all else were passing around him. And, and he showed there, how do you beat the blanket? You kick the ball high and long and over the bat. Right. It's as simple as that. All right, well, he did, he did well there. And again, we see the blanket defence. But let's hear from then our man of the match, Donegal's Ryan Bradley. Ryan, congratulations. Uh, the word that seems to be bandied about most of all about that today was scrappy. Would you go along with that? Uh, the weather wasn't great for it and probably we were a bit nervous trying to get past the first round. You know, we've lost out the last couple of years, but it's just nice to get the job done. But the weather probably plays part two in the game. So is that something that was playing on your mind going into it? Uh, I suppose we were a lot of confidence after we won the league, but still, championship's a different story. I'm just happy to get past the first round. Playing in that forward line today, was it frustrating because... It, Trying to get the ball into there seemed to be difficult. Uh, Antrim played an extra man behind a lot of times. We were kicking the ball in two times, kick the ball into an extra man. Then we started to run the game, we got more, a bit more success, and it started to work out better for us then. All right, well done.